Once upon a time when I started writing poetry, I thought that writing a poem is getting somewhere. Writing, I thought writing poetry means getting somewhere. Uh, to change the world, to help the outbreak of revolution, to fight against social injustice, and so on and so forth. Nothing of what I wanted to do with my poetry has happened. So now I'm in a place where I don't know where I came from. I don't know where I'm going. Uh, because writing poetry is a meaningful activity in its own right. And it need not be utilitarian in any way. So that's where I stand. Uh, I'll be reading some of my poems to illustrate what I've been trying to do at different stages of uh, uh, my creative writing in the last uh, four decades. Uh, well, I've been in the service of what Anna Akhamatova called the thankless muse. Uh, let me begin with a quote from uh, my, one of my favorite poets, uh, William Butler Yeats, who said, out of quarrel with others, we make politics. Out of quarrel with ourselves, we make poetry. Very fascinating statement, but I don't quite agree. Because you write poetry and you want to fight with the world outside. Because you have no weapons to defeat the enemies outside. Tukaram said, Aman chaghare shabdan chadhana. In our words, we have only, in our house, we have only the wealth of words. Shabdhi astra, shabdhi shastra. Words are our weapons. So we quarrel with the world, we become reconciled. It's a lover's quarrel, and quarrel with the self. But the basic thing about poetry, it seems to me, is a non-stop dialogue between the self and the world. Without going into the metaf metaphysical ramification of the self and the world, epistemological implication and so on, My face is the self and the world is a mirror. Sufis often bring, bring it this image metaphor of the mirror. And uh, in Kashmir Shaiva philosophy, the model of understanding is called Bimba Pratibimba Nyaya, the image and reflection, the world is a reflection. So the world reflects me, we also reflect the world. And what happens in between, when translated into words, it becomes poetry. But, who am I writing for? Uh, when, when, during my formative years, uh, I grew up in the uh, context of uh, Kannada Navya literature where people believed in a kind of uh, what Bhatte would call uh, 
intransitive literature, not writing for anybody. It is an expression uh, exercised in uh, formal, uh, uh, for formalistic experiment. Then a new uh, milieu developed of uh, Dalita and Bandai where poetry became suddenly transitive. You're writing to change the world, to challenge the world, and so on. And one of my late uh, friends, uh, Dia Naraj, was a well-known uh, uh, literary critic all over India, uh, my close friend, and he wrote the first pamphlet of Bandai literature, rebel literature, and the slogan he gave was, Khadgavagali Kavya, Janara Novige Miriva Pranamita, let poetry become a sword. The uh, great friend of who, who, who uh, resonates with the uh, agonies of people. I said, what use is the sword these days? It should have been something more useful. At least a blade. A blade is much more useful than the sword. So none of these poems did anything to change the society. Though they were not complete useless exercises, the communities and groups of people who were marginalized in silence for ages were able to speak out. So that happened. It had some impact on the confidence level of different groups of people. It couldn't change the world. So I also fantasize that one day my poetry would change the world, then that never happened. For the self to communicate with the other, one has to find a language intelligible to both. During the heyday of Kannada modernist movement, Kannada modernist movement is not modernist enough because it was a truncated version of Anglo-American modernism, very illiterate, ignorant, knew nothing about other great traditions of modernism like Russian formalism and so on. So that was prevalent. And a lot of writers prided themselves on writing unintelligible poems. I also started writing unintelligible poems. Before I would write a line, they said every word has to be an image, a symbol. The first thing, what is this word symbol of or image of? When the first book of poems came out, of course, what was actually writing is not this conscious self, my own unconscious, which is unteachable, doesn't learn from anybody. So that was writing. And as my writing career progressed, I came to realize more and more, it's not the conscious I who's writing. There's another I sitting inside. And that has been writing. I have been monopolizing what maybe somebody else just strange to myself, my conscious self as any other person. When I was reading uh, Boris Pasternak's Dr. Zhivago, uh, in this poem, Dr. Zhivago uh, is writing some poems, and when he's writing, he hears the whispers of his old tradition. So one writes with the strength of the collective unconscious. This has been my conviction throughout. So first, to find a common language, uh, I was a not a very bad student of modern poetry, he read a lot of modern poets, and uh, at that time, myth was used a lot as uh, a mode of communication in poetry. So I started working with myths. Uh, particularly, I was fascinated by Buddhism. Apart from poetry, I've also been a spiritual speaker throughout my life. I've experimented with different uh, schools of spirituality, Buddhist, Jaina, Sufi, and so many others. 
So Buddhism fascinated me at some point of time. And then I was fascinated by Sufism. I was fascinated by Jainism. So I'll first read some of my poems which use myths as a basis. I'll just read two of them, then I'll go further. earliest poems is called Milarepa. It's based on uh, the autobiography of the great Tibetan yogi Milarepa. And uh, it is said that Milarepa's uh, family, somebody, uh, you know, uh, uh, used a lot of black magic against his family. The family was destroyed and he goes to a, a black magic guru and learns black magic and he destroys his enemies uh, that this guru then tells him you not only destroyed yourself you've destroyed others so uh, go to a good master and uh, save yourself then he goes to his guru Lotsava Marpa uh, and uh, after uh, learning the uh, Buddhist teachings from Lotsava Marpa uh, he comes to uh, his home village and uh, he sees that his house has been uh, turned into a wreck by his enemies who have used uh, black magic against him. What is it? Um, so this is what happens in this poem. I hope I can get just a moment. Yes, Milarek. Uh, I don't have the Kanada original, I remember some of the lines. I just quote from the original. Kanasu kandid diddu kanna munde anuta Bidda mane Gyadralo tindidda kambagado That's how it begins. The dream is now before the eyes. The collapsed house, termite-eaten wooden pillars, a fallow stretch amidst millet fields, remains of what once was a home. The memories of childhood and ancestors buried beneath the nameless show, snow. But this is the place where I hope, hopped about in babyhood. The flame of youth leapt up underneath woolen clothes in biting cold when spurning the threshold, I went in search of the guru. This is where a tear drop soaked my mother's choked mouth. Where are you, O oh father, bringing backs, backs, backfuls of millet home, you sturdy peasant? Can I bring back the ones who bore and reared me, now buried memories amidst snowflakes and scattered broken building blocks ever ready to carry out my bidding. The armies of Dakinis assures me, yes, we can bring back, bring the dead back or turn into gold these snowflakes even if you just say yes, O Milarepa, O Guru Marpa, you made these Dakinis my slaves who can satisfy all desires at the flick of my finger but then demonstrated that desire is the foundation of all houses which collapse thus and of samsara. He taught me the secrets of Nidana, showed me the dance of darkness from start to finish. I bow down to you, O charioteer, 
driving the flaming chariot of the Vajra, Vajra path. I bow down to you. The snow that covers of scattered stones, the worm-eaten pillars, these are the inscription on the forehead of the three worlds. On the brink of Nirvana, even Buddha, the master, suffers a stomach ache. Why should I make you again victims of the turning wheel, O oh father, O oh mother? So this was a hymn I just finished. I've written only myth poems. Let me read something else also. Uh, some poems are nothing to do with myths. I, I first thought that these the poems are not serious poems, but uh, later I realized I see. Okay, no. What my father says. There's a, an epigraph at the beginning. A young man asked the rabbi. Why are there no people today who can see God face to face? Replied the rabbi. There are no more, more, no more people who can bend so low. So it's a dialogue between my father and myself. Son, look at the tall mango tree. You too should grow as tall as that. If you do, you can just put out your hands and pluck fruits. I trusted him, but have grown as tall as the tree was, but the tree has now become dwarfed. It's now shorter than I ever was when I was so small. I am now so tall, however much I bend low and strain my back, I cannot reach the man. If I want to pluck them, I should be as small as a tiny ant. But alas, I have now grown so tall. My tall father, taller than my tall fa father, I hear another father telling his son, Son, look at the tall mango tree. Then I use history as one of the uh, you know, uh, uh, modes of communication, writing about history. Uh, later I realized that poetry is neither myth nor history. Poetry is the present. Uh, Octavio Paz puts it very beautifully, mythless I enter the present. Uh, these days, uh, in our uh, Kannada criticism, people talk about uh, a poem being relevant to the world. Contemporary. I don't believe in contemporariness. I believe in the present. So contemporary happening at the same time, present need not be at the same time. For example, a play by Iskalas or by Kalidasa is more present to me than a play by Girish Karnad. Why? Because Kalidas and Shakespeare and Sophocles are more present to me than what is contemporary. Um, so I'll just, uh, this, this is what I wanted to say. So uh, let me read one of just one or two poems and conclude. How, how much more time do we have? Five minutes. Okay. This is Ambapali. Ambapali's story, everybody knows, she was uh, a courtesan during Buddha's time. There have been many uh, works written about her. So this is me talking to Ambapali. What was it before you came, O Ambapali? What was this Vesali? What had it given before it gave you, O Ambapali? The nomad Malaya breeze now rests by your side, O Ambapali. In the mango grows, bursting with foliage, every fruit covered, hiding, takes on its shape and meaning in your body and sex inside, outside you, O Ambapali. The sun and the moon 
waiting in two separate prisons of the day and the night, have now found the same hope in your face, the same light in your eyes, O oh Allah. What was they saw you before you came? After you came, days turned into nights, and your dreams have turned nights into days. Before you came, the cry of gold rang through Vesali. Give me, give me a jewel of life. The cry of silk drifted through Vesali. Give me, give me a skirt of life. Until you came everywhere, the rule of masters over slaves, the fury of rags against pure gold, the conflict of dogmas and doctrines. After you came, no masters but only slaves, your slaves, Bars of gold are only the rags. No more dogmas and doctrines. And all debates are at an end. A loud clamor resounds everywhere. What will guard us from this onslaught? From afar, a cool breeze. But when near, a hurricane. What will guard us from you, O Mbapali? O tempest in which whirls the human world like dry leaves. Before you came, Vesali was only Vesali. But now, Vesali is also Magadha, Kosambi, and Varanasi. All kings are beggars at your doors. All heroes are your prisoners. All wealth is worthless dust. All hearts, eyes, and hands are begging bowels, begging for you. For your love, O Ambapali. Second part. When thus beauty turns into a curse, and wealth means disaster to Vesali, when your forelocks portend the dissolution of three worlds, there must appear on the eastern horizon a blossom lotus, a begging bowl, the smile of the moon and the face of the sun. Buddha, the king of beggars, Buddha, the best of yogis, must stretch before you his begging bowl of emptiness, not for prison, but for the prison, not for slaves, but for the slave owners, but for you, O Amba. What will become of Vesali after you, O Ambapali? What will it be with you as after it gives you away, O Ambapali? So there's no time. I just conclude with, um, uh, see, I've written many kinds of poems. I've only read one types. No time to read other types, you know. I just conclude. I've written a lot of plays. I uh, write to conclude with uh, one of my theater songs. This is a song I wrote for, it's a lullaby. I've written a Serious lullabies. Uh, it's one of my favorite genres. And this is from my play called Madhavi. Uh, the protagonist of the play Madhavi is, uh, is a, uh, one of the uh, characters in uh, Silapatigaram, the great Tamil epic. He is putting her child to <coughs> sleep. And uh, I'll first uh, uh, translate it to English and then it's a very short poem. Then I'll conclude with that. Sleep, my daughter, sleep. Like cloud on the lap of the sky. Sleep, my daughter, sleep. Sleep, my daughter, sleep. Like thunder in the heart of the cloud. Sleep, my slow daughter, sleep. Sleep, my daughter, sleep. Like volcano in the ocean zoom. Sleep, my daughter, sleep. Sleep, my daughter, sleep. Like yearnings in the depths of our hearts. Sleep, my daughter, sleep. So I'll recite everything. Uh, I'm not a singer, but so I'll just hum it. I write beautiful songs, but I can't sing them, but I'll just hum it. Jo 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 malagawa yawa malagawa malagawa na 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 gadu malagawa jo 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 Mughili gaganada mailalli Mughilu malaguwa hage Malaguwa yawa Malaguwa malaguwa nana magali malaguwa Mughili nayade yalli Shidilu malaguwa hage Malaguwa yawa Malaguwa malaguwa nana magali malaguwa Kadali na basiralli Chu malagua hage malagua yawa malagua malagua nanana malagua antaraadagalli bayake malagua hage